Well, if you'll turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 8. And I'm going to read uh, Luke chapter 8, verse 48. And then I'll have a word of prayer. Luke 8, 48 says, And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Let's bow for prayer. Heavenly Father, I do pray that you would help us now. Uh, for we are a needy people. We need help from on high. And we're here uh, for a special reason, and that is to hear from you. And so, Father, I pray that you'd bless this message and that you'd help me to bring it through the Holy Spirit. I ask it by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. In Luke chapter 8, there are three aspects of faith that I want us to look at. Um, Faith cometh by reading the Word of God and by hearing the Word of God preached, right? And uh, so I'm going to uh, attempt, uh, with the Lord's help, to increase all of our faith a little bit today. And so uh, the three aspects of faith will begin by, I want to look at um, Luke chapter 8. The story of this lady that touched the, the garment of Jesus, and we'll start in verse 43 and read on through to the verse on the wall, verse 48. So uh, Luke 8, 43 through 48. And a woman, having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of, border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stanched. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee and sayest thou, Who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody has touched me, for I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. And the woman, the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling. And falling down before him, she declared unto him before all the people for what cause he, she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort, for thy faith made thee whole. Go in peace. We know her name as the woman who touched Jesus. No real given name is there in Scripture. But I think there's a purpose for that in the sense that you and I can identify then with this person. Note that Jesus, at this moment, was being thronged. There were a lot of people around him, touching him, asking him questions. And, and he had just gotten the attention of Jairus, didn't he? And Jairus, uh, we'll read about him in a moment because it's another aspect of faith, but Jairus was talking to him and he was on his way to Jairus' house to heal his daughter who was sick unto death, just 12 years old maybe. And while he was going through the throng and with him and Jairus, uh, his thoughts are on them, suddenly he said, who touched me? Her faith surpassed all of the throng. Her faith surpassed what he was thinking about for Jairus. Her faith may have touched his garment, but her faith also touched his heart. And might I say by faith, that's how we touch Jesus' heart? Might I say that in the bulletin that you have, there are, is a prayer list. And we may just say the person's name, but Jesus knows who they are and what they need. And so just saying a name touches Jesus' heart. Just speak in a name. And you know what else is, she didn't say a word, did she? You know, it's, a lot of you come to church and uh, as soon as the first hymn is done, 
you're afraid that we might call on you to uh, open in prayer. And you say to yourself, well, I'm not real eloquent. I wish I could say the words that would impress people. But that's not what impresses Jesus, is it? It's your faith that impresses Jesus. Yeah, in other words, you don't have to uh, practice what you're going to say to Jesus. You just say it. The best you know how. From your heart to his heart. He's not here anymore to try to find and just, oh, if I could just touch his garment. He's not here anymore. But we can touch his heart by faith. Thy faith hath made thee whole, not through utterance of eloquent words, but by a touch of faith. None of us can touch his garment anymore, but any one of us can touch his heart by faith. We have our prayer bulletin. I, w I wonder if you have a book at home of a list of names of people you are praying for. I wonder if maybe, uh, maybe you're at the store and you see... Uh, I'm just mentioning, uh, I, I remember the last time I went to the store, there's guys uh, my age, we call them greeters, right? If I was a greeter and somebody would come in, I'd say, get your stuff and get out. <laughs> I would not make a good greeter. And as they're leaving, I'd say, don't let the door hit you on the way out. I just wouldn't make, I'd make a terrible greeter. But I look at these men that are my age, some of them, some of them are in wheelchairs, some of them have canes, some of them are, I'd have to say, um, not as healthy as me. And you know what I do? I try to touch Jesus' heart by just saying, God bless that man. You know, maybe he's got a sickly wife at home or in a nursing home, maybe he's got He's got reasons to have to still work at his age. And so I say a little, little prayer. And, and, and trust by faith. From my heart to his. That Jesus will bless that man. That's an aspect of faith, isn't it? Our prayer, our prayer life. By faith. Jesus isn't standing there. You're not talking to him like I'm talking to you. He's in your heart. He's in heaven. He's not someone you can touch like the border of his garment. And yet by faith, we can reach God. Now I'm going to go to uh, Luke chapter 8. Stay in Luke chapter 8, and I'm going to read, um, what am I going to read? 41. Verse 41. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house, for he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a-dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. Now, as Jesus was responding to Jairus, this is when the woman touched the hem of his garment, but Jairus is still in a panic, right? And then if we read, if I'll read verses 49 through 55. After he deals with the lady that touched his garment, there's more to the story, isn't there? As I read, while he yet spake, the, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead, trouble not the master. And when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. He's talking about faith. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her, but he said, Weep not, she's not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. 
And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. Uh, let, let me just say it in this sentence. Jesus didn't get there in time. He was on his way while the little girl was still sick, wasn't he? But he didn't get there in time. And oh, we can learn from that because in our lives, there have been many moments in our lives when we've lost people we love. And I can, can I say it in a certain way? Jesus didn't get there in time. So how do we deal with that by faith? Jesus said these words. And the words of Jesus are just as important as Jesus himself in the sense that he said, fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. He said words like this to, remember the funeral of Lazarus? Martha and Mary, they came running to Jesus. He didn't get there in time. Martha fell at his feet and said, Jesus, if you'd only been here, my brother would still be alive. And this is what he said to Martha. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe. Thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. We read again in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and this speaks more to you and I. Remember Jesus said to Jairus, your daughter is not dead, she sleepeth. Listen to these words. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. You see where faith takes you? Can you say, I believe Jesus? Believing by faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is a cure for your soul, isn't it? But take it a step further and believe by faith in the resurrection of your loved ones. And that's a balm for a broken heart and for a broken soul. There is a balm in Gilead. His name is Jesus Christ who rose from the dead. If we believe that he was buried and rose again from the dead, if we believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, then it follows by faith that those that die in him will also rise again. At Mott Children's Hospital, us parents would all run into each other and talk about each other. Well, what does your child have? How's your child? And, and, and we all realize that we're on the same floor in a hospital where all of our children have pretty much received the death sentence. And so what do we do? When I went up there as a parent who had lost a son, trying to encourage other parents, what was I doing? I was handing out balm. I was handing about out first aid for broken hearts, passing out band-aids as it were, because the balm of Gilead doesn't heal the wound, but it makes it bearable by faith, believing, I believe. So there's two aspects of faith that I've talked about, and that is you can touch the heart of Jesus by faith in prayer, and it does not have to be a fancy prayer. Sometimes it does not even have to be in words. You can touch Jesus. 
And the other is is believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We'll celebrate that, won't we, in a few weeks? We celebrate it when we have, in a sense, uh, when we have communion, don't we? And we're here because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And may God increase our faith. Because we all are here with broken hearts when we think about those that we've lost. Just like Mary and Martha. Just like Jairus when he walked into that bedroom and saw his daughter there dead. There's another aspect of uh, faith, and I find that in uh, Luke chapter 8, verse 28. i got to make sure I'm right. (laughs) I'm really good at looking stupid, so. Luke 8, 28 says, When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him with a loud voice, said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. There's more to the story about the maniac of Gadara. If I go up to verse 26, I'll read. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time, and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. He came to Jesus not knowing what to do. What have I to do with you, Jesus? But he came to Jesus. Sometimes we don't know what else to do but just to come to Jesus. By faith, he didn't run from Jesus. By faith, he fell down at Jesus' feet, yet tormented. Oh, was he tormented. Tormented by his demons. Remember what the Bible says about demons? The demons also believe and tremble. And there was Jesus. Tormented by his life and how he was treated. Tormented by his own thoughts. His question was more like, I think it more like, why would you come to visit someone like me? What do I have to do with you, Jesus? Of all people, for you to come and see me? He may be an extreme example for the words that Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor, and that heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But there's a reason why I think the maniac of Gadara is the example. Because there's pretty much, you can't beat that. And there's a part of him, whatever it may be in your life, that you can identify with. He was tormented. It is by faith we take all of our torments, all of our troubles, all of our demons to the feet of Jesus and let him deal with them. For the maniac of Gadara, that kind of happened overnight. For you and I, generally, it takes longer than that. And the more you come to him and the more you're able to leave it at Jesus' feet, you know, sometimes you leave your your demons and your torments at Jesus' feet, and when you get up, you you kind of look back and start bringing them back into your life. And so it can become a long, drawn-out prospect, but I'll guarantee you this, if you bring them to Jesus by faith, he will help you. To whom shall we go? Now I want to read in Luke chapter 8, verses 38 and 39, about the the result of the maniac of Gadara. 
and verses 38 and 39 in Luke chapter 8, it says, Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought Jesus, or him, that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house, show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. Let me say it this way, as simply put as possible. You and I know the story of the maniac of Gadara, and that's what we give him the name of. But in heaven, he's known as the soul winner of Gadara. Right? And he's there in heaven, and, and there are people he affected when he went and told his story. And I keep trying to get us to identify with these people that we talked about the woman just touching Jesus, touching his heart. And we, we talked about Jairus by faith and, and, and Jesus telling him, just believe my words. And then the other is the maniac of Gadara. What do I have to do with you? Why are you so interested in me, Jesus? Oh, he's interested in you just as much as he was interested in that maniac. He went clear across an ocean. He was going to go into Gadara, but he took time to stop and see that man and save his soul. And now he went back and he told his story. And that's about all. You know, some of you might be good at memorizing a lot of scripture, but a good witness for Jesus is to just tell your story. Maybe how you used to be. Maybe not so much living in the tombs outside the city, but maybe you got close to that. I don't know. I, I know this, if I hadn't accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior, I, I, probably, uh, I probably would have been just as, I would have been dead by now. I probably would, I very, very definitely would be in hell, right? Without Jesus. So it behooves me. By faith to trust that Jesus will take all my torments, all my demons, all my bothersome sorrows, and have him help me by faith. We may not be able to touch his garment, but by faith we can touch his heart. We may have lost dear loved ones, but by faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we will see them again by faith. Amen. We may have our own set of torments, but by faith we can leave them at the feet of Jesus. And that's the message. You may be here today and you feel you can't say the right words in prayer to get Jesus' attention, but that's not true. It's your faith that gets his attention. You may be here grieving over the loss of dear loved ones, as Jairus did over his daughter that first moment. The very, the very faith you used to trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is also a balm for your soul and broken heart. You will see them again. You may be here today with torments and demons that you have no control over. Bring them to Jesus. Keep bringing them to Jesus. And by faith, trust him to give you rest. Come unto me. May God bless the preaching of his holy word. When we stand to sing our invitation song, may you at some time bow your head in prayer and say, God, increase my faith. Increase my faith.